the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. It could change physics forever. The revamped Large Hadron Collider LHC is due to be restarted after a two-year hiatus. Described in some reports as a monstrous underground atom smasher, the LHC is the world's most powerful particle collider, and it's already revolutionized physics with the discovery of the Higgs boson. Higgs boson's ability to give mass to most elementary particles has earned it the nickname the God Particle. The LHC is expected to run faster than ever and is predicted to reach its highest collision energy by June. It's on course to smash all records and solve some of the biggest mysteries in physics. After years in the repair shop, the world's most complex machine is coming out of hibernation. Scientists are hitting the restart button on the Large Hadron Collider. Straddling the French-Swiss border, what's been called the Big Bang Machine consists of a 17-mile underground ring. There, subatomic particles travel at almost the speed of light and are smashed together, allowing scientists to sift through the aftermath in an attempt to answer unsolved questions about things like dark matter, supersymmetry, and extra dimensions. The LHC is a science experiment that took decades to come together. The LHC was finally up and running in 2008. For the first time, a beam of protons steered around the collider, but it wasn't a smooth start. Nine days later, an electrical problem damaged the machine. About one year and $40 million in repairs later, the machine was back online and the payoff was colossal. In 2012, CERN announced the discovery of the elusive Higgs boson, the so-called guard particle, thought to explain how other particles get their mass. But the following year, the $10 billion proton collider was taken offline for refurbishing. Now, it's being fired up again. This run is due to go through 2017. With the upgrades, particles can collide together at even higher energies, giving scientists another chance to unlock the mysteries of our universe. The Large Hadron Collider is being fired up this week after a two-year hiatus, and a group of scientists believes that the results could prove the existence of parallel universes. Scientists believe that a second run of the LHC could produce or detect miniature black holes, which they argue could point to entire universes hidden away in higher dimensions folded into our reality. Now the LHC will be powered to its highest ever energy levels, about double those of its last run. And if these scientists are right, the new run could uncover black holes tucked away in dimensions beyond the four that we interact with in our daily lives. So the book of Revelation opens up the future for us. So in Revelation chapter number 9 and verse 1, the scripture says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared to battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. They had hair as the hair of a woman, and with teeth were as the teeth of lions. 
and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tail. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Woe, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now what I'm going to preach you this morning may be one of the most important messages that I've ever preached in all the years that I've been preaching the Word of God. But what I have studied has alarmed me greatly to the point to where I need to get this material out to you that are listening. I originally had planned to preach this tonight, but the Holy Spirit changed my mind and said, preach it in the morning. So this morning I'm going to preach you a message about something that is happening right now. It's in CERN, Switzerland. Now you may not be aware of what's going on over there, but there's a thing over there that's called a Large Hadron Collider. And it is an accelerator. It accelerates particles and then brings them to the point of collision. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up just a few days ago, and it's still in the initial process of being brought online completely. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. It makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from a theoretical physicist, Stephen Hawking. And he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein. Listen carefully. These are the words of Stephen Hawking. He recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's Large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said, the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist, and he says there is no God. Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, and I'll give you what they're trying to do in a moment, what's happening at this very minute in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has also sounded the alarm by telling anyone who might want to blow up a planet how to do so is this CERN's attempt to do so by attempting to recreate the Big Bang within a man-made structure. This has frightened Stephen Hawking so much. Do they know that they know that they know what they are doing? Ask yourself, how much energy is keeping it together? Then you put more than that amount of energy into the object, it will explode. I've quoted two physicists. These are scientists. These men do not agree with what's happening in CERN, Switzerland right now. There is a 17 mile long accelerator that lies 300 feet beneath the surface of the ground. This area is where France and Switzerland come together. So part of this accelerator is located in France and part of it in Switzerland. It is a joint European project. The United States of America is there as an observer. But the, but the brain power that's going in to this experimentation originates in Europe. They are attempting to recreate what they believe happened that brought all of this into existence as being the Big Bang. Now you and I know from the book of Genesis chapter number one that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He spoke it into existence. They are finding things, and this is what's important for us to understand today. They are discovering things that they did not expect to discover as they get deeper and deeper into this, uh, into this experimentation. They are beginning to find out that there is a whole lot more to the creation 
than they had ever given thought to before. They're beginning to find out that there's something going on here that boggles the human mind, that literally blows us apart when we try to even comprehend what's happening. This 17 mile long underground tube that is uh, located there in Switzerland has I think four or five different points where they collide particles that are being moved at or above the speed of light inside this collider. They're looking for the very building blocks of what brought all of this together. To give you an analogy, let's say you have a house. You observe that house, it's beautiful. You think, my goodness, let's see how this is put together. And so you start taking the house apart and you expect to find nails, but instead you find glue. That fascinates you that much more because you find glue holding this house together. You wonder to yourself, what was this glue like before its hardened state? Because you see, once the glue glues the things together, it hardens, solidifies. They want to know what the glue was like in its liquid state. So they're going through this to go back to that point to where they can separate and find out what this was like then. And by doing that, of course, they can build on the information and knowledge that they attain. Now what's going to follow in the message this morning is the implications of what's going on. But let me give you just a little bit of what has been happening. Where they have done this experimentation, strange things are happening, unexpected by the scientist. Paranormal phenomena, they like to call it. Apparitions, ghosts, all kinds of demonic spirits are beginning to manifest themselves in ways. Here we have in CERN, Switzerland, a huge wheel. Inside that wheel is a Hindu god and his name is Shiva. He does a dance of destruction inside that wheel and his purpose is he is one of the triad gods, one of the greatest gods of Hinduism, Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma. Brahma is the god of creation. Vishnu is the god of preservation, but Shiva is the god of destruction. The way the Hindu sees it is that when Shiva destroys, it's not for the purpose of annihilation. He destroys so that Brahma can come and recreate. So now when the Hindu sends their scientist to CERN, they put this out there in front. And so what these people are doing with the collider is destroying what comes together, but for the purpose of recreating and find out what brought it into existence to begin with. Are you following me? Yeah. Now here we have men that are scientists on an average of an IQ of anywhere from 160 to 200 or even above. These are some of the smartest brains in all the world. No, that's no question about it whatsoever. But we were told when Darwin's theory of evolution came out and became vogue, that it would destroy the foundations of Christianity. And this old book that we hold in our hands, this old outdated Bible would no longer be relevant. And a lot of people bought into it because after all, Darwin is scientific. But it's an amazing thing now that 150 years later, we have some of the greatest scientists in the world that are becoming very religious because here they've got Shiva, they've got dances to Shiva.
transformé. And they are definitely being connected with Shiva as they're finding things. Let me give you one example. In one of their collisions, when they collided these particles together, they saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see. They didn't fit in any model. They didn't fit anywhere. They don't belong. But they, they could not deny the reality of it. Something was going on inside there that they could not explain. And it was scary for them. For the scientist has his paper and his pencil and his books. And if it doesn't fit in his paper and his pencil and his books, it's out the window. They don't understand. They have a hard time accepting the fact that there is a spirit world out there. That spirit world was created by a spirit being. An almighty, eternal, absolute being that is from everlasting to everlasting who put in me what I am today by the power of Almighty God and by the power of the new birth. But a scientist like that will never admit that because that takes it out of his control and his power. Stephen Hawking has warned these people, you are about to open Pandora's box. And once you open Pandora's box, you cannot put back in what came out of that box. The Bible said, He that letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. God Almighty is going to let them go so far, but he's not going to go any further. Demons, all this other stuff, probably couldn't care less whether you've got matter or antimatter. It's a spirit being. But to fit into the great deception that's coming and it's coming and it's about here right now. I mean a deception like this world has never known before. To fit into this great deception, they can sure draw these men in to make them think that because they have reached this certain point in their scientific analysis that they're bringing in these spirit beings. It'll make true believers out of them. NASA said just a few days ago, NASA, they said just a few days ago that by the year 2020 that we will definitely come in contact with aliens, beings from another planet. Now we're talking about scientists. We're talking about Darwin's crowd. We're talking about the crowd that threw the Bible out and said it's old, archaic, anachronistic. It doesn't belong today. We're talking about that bunch. We're too smart for the Bible, we're scientists. Yet this crowd is saying that in just a few years that they're gonna know, that they know that they're gonna come in contact with alien beings. I thought to myself, my, 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 my. Do you boys, have you already, have you always known that? That you've got a certain date set? And what you think is an alien being is really a demon? There are no aliens out there, folks. Forget that stuff, okay? There's nothing out there. You get into the third heaven, you get into the abode of God. There's nothing up there. All these UFOs, spacecraft, flying saucers, all this stuff, that's all demonic. It's real, but it's demonic. I see a great deception beginning to develop. 
that in their analysis and in their laboratories that they believe in, that they've got their heart and soul tied up in, little things begin to show up, stuff that they can't explain, that sucks them in to begin to understand, well, maybe this is, a, this is being affected, it's being acted upon by something that we don't understand completely. And this spirit being that comes from out there, that comes down to this world, they accept with open arms because they're willing to put Shiva out there dancing around in the cosmos and destroying and then bringing a new creation in. Here are these wise, smart, brilliant men. And they're willing to believe that there's something more than what can be measured in a microscope and can be put in a petri dish. That there's something going on and you better believe there is. Now in the spirit world that I just preached to you about, you can see that. Now what about the physical world? Let's go back to Hawking for a minute. He said, remember, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in spirits. He's a dialectical materialist. He believes that what they're liable to do here in CERN, Switzerland, is unleash the gates of hell on this earth. The reason I took you to Revelation is because in the ninth chapter of Revelation, what you just read, is the gate of hell. Yeah. Revelation chapter number four is the door to heaven. When he catches up his saints to meet him in the clouds, we're going through the door into heaven. But he will open the gate of hell on this earth. And according to Revelation chapter number nine, these beings are coming up out of the earth. If you remember when Saul went to the witch of Endor, she said, I saw old oh men, I saw spirit coming up out of the earth, coming up. What she see? She saw demons. Until God brought Samuel back himself personally, the real Samuel, who appeared before Saul and the witch of Endor. How, what would be a greater ruse than to use their science and their technology to suck them in? to accepting some spirit being coming from somewhere up here, some alien, down to this earth and do it through a collider over here. This is as high a technology I suppose you got on this earth. And do it through that and bring it down upon this earth and bring it into people. If somebody arrived on earth from another planet and they asked you, what on earth are you doing at CERN? In a sentence, how would you explain it? Um, in a sentence, I would say what we're trying to do is understand the universe around us as well as we possibly can. Is that the way you would characterize what's happening at CERN? Um, and that's the hope, of course. And every scientist is like a child that is playing on the throne, as you know. And uh, that's, that's what everybody on the planet is hoping for. So the intention is marvelous, uh, only uh, uh, this physics, which no one knows yet in, in this realm, uh, also contains dangers. And I'm a little concerned about the dangers that are not yet, how should I say, addressed so far. It is a wonderful hope connected to CERN. And there is a danger involved, and uh, the danger has not been disproved. Delivery. seems not normal. Honey, I think 
I might have opened a dimensional vortex. Just don't throw anything into it. stick it's called a staff okay so here's the deal there's this real bad dude wears a helmet he's been tearing rifts between all the lego worlds wow i only understood about half of that but it sounds pretty bad and he's got our friends so we must return to our quest to save them We're on wizard time. I do believe it is now my turn to operate this vehicle. Well, nice meeting you, whatever your name is. I still don't entirely trust you. Many thanks for your assistance, goodly giant. No problem. Good luck. six years and millions of dollars and you gave us nothing what's different now reed richards he knows answers to questions we don't even know to ask yet. this is our chance to learn more about our planet and maybe even save it what you've created here is incredible they just cracked interdimensional travel you opened a door you don't know how to close you don't know anything about what's coming. What is coming? Doom. With every second that ticks by, the future is running out. What if there was a place, a secret place, where nothing was impossible? Stop it! Go away! Did you see the dog? I want you to take me there. Take you where? Where'd you get this? Who are you, kid? What you saw was a place where the best and the brightest people in the world came together to actually change it. We've been looking for someone like you for a very long time. Why? Did something happen over there? Something bad? They followed you here? Who? Come on! Get in! There's one way in. They know we're coming, so follow me. All the people, why me? He thinks you can fix the future. You wanted to see Tomorrowland. Here it comes.
We've never met before, right? Follow me. to see Tomorrowland. Here it comes. Honey, I think I might have opened a dimensional vortex. know there are not hundreds not millions but billions of other solar systems out there thanks to the Hubble telescope and what we know about black holes in the universe and all of that the, the dimensions of physics are such that I would be quite surprised if in the lifetime of people that are no older than 30 here we don't discover 
some form of life in another universe. So I think there are lots of interesting discoveries, biological, on Earth, and other discoveries in the heavens that those of you who are younger will get to see unfold. You'll have all kinds of problems with them, but on balance it'll be a plus. And it'll make life much more interesting. But you have to remember our world is made up of matter. The antimatter is what we can't see, what we can't touch, what we can't feel, so we interact with it every day. A lot of people like to think of antimatter as the other dimension, which is the opposite of this dimension. It's an inconceivable place that is hostile inherently. It's not under control, it's very hostile. So there's a physical effect to the spiritual world and antimatter. And often, demonic entities and all these other paranormal things are attracted to antimatter. For every gram of antimatter that's produced and then it's bought into this world when they produce it. It attracts things from another dimension coming here. What is CERN going to do? Is to allow humanity to produce pounds of antimatter. What's happening, that is the unseen portion of dark matter. And of course you have the angels which govern what that realm can and cannot do because everything is balanced the uh, subject of Lucifer in the spiritual sense because God gives everything balance. Everything has balance. There is dark, there's light, there's good, there's bad. They, everything has balance. CERN has yielded so many results and gave a true definition of paranormal activity. It's just, it's beyond me that a lot of people cannot get this through the truth of the word. They, they can't. Antimatter is being pulled out of nowhere, out of this other dimension, which is nowhere but everywhere. In consequence to that, they found out antimatter has a specific type of energy signature that they can, in fact, detect. This is how they, uh, it's part of the process of pulling it out. Well, as it comes to find out, some of the not so good consequences of this process has to do with the human psyche. With all the experiments they found, they have found out why paranormal activity exists. With CERN, as they begin to collide these protons, dark matter is going to be produced in great numbers. I mean, in greater and greater numbers. Not only the matter, but the energy signature is going to also be released into this realm. You know what that's going to cause? It's going to cause the dark energy signature within people to begin to activate more and more. You see, it's gonna become difficult for people to stay contained or controlled. In essence, they're gonna become violent. They're gonna become, they're gonna have vivid dreams the darkness within a person is absolutely going to begin to surface. And it's, this is not uh, theoretical. This is not uh, uh, some theory somebody thought of. This is absolutely 100% quantifiable, and it's happened before. It's going to happen in greater numbers this time. It's going to, it will take effect. Now here's one of the things about this. This, this, this antimatter is also called dark matter. And dark matter has energy attached to it. And the energy affects people. It affects them. And remember, when you produce antimatter, you've got to contain it. Because if you don't contain it, you've got to contain it. That's the biggest problem, containing it. Because if you don't contain it, it just goes wild. And they don't know what it's liable to do. Now, folks, go check me out. Go check me out. I, I want you to. Go check me out this afternoon and see what it says about antimatter. And it'll say, yes, you better contain it because you don't know what it's liable to do. But they do know this. From what they've experienced so far, it has an effect on people. Dark matter has an effect on people. It causes some people to go screaming mad. It controls people. 
It is, an, it is an enormously powerful thing. It's pulling something out of hell that you don't want any part to do with and turning it loose on mankind. Now, you know, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't ever been in agreement with an atheist before, but I'm in agreement with this one. <laughs> I and Mr. Hawking see it the same way. They better leave that stuff alone. What CERN does, it accelerates particles in that big circle around and around and around and around until they're traveling at just enormous velocity. And then they collide these particles together. And in that moment, it creates a moment that they think is kind of how the Big Bang started the whole universe. That's the whole purpose behind it. However, they also believe that there are parallel realities around us, other dimensions, and there could be other intelligence there. However, there's a reason God put them on the other side of that veil, and you might not want to open the door. And here's the thing. Okay. Their, own, their own director of CERN has gave uh, uh, interviews to the British press in which he admits that's what they're trying to do. They want to open a door to another dimension. And uh. he said, when we open this door, he said, something might come through it into our reality, or he said, we might send something through it into their reality. You can look that up. It's in the British press. Where the CERN was built, this is St. Genus Poeli. That's the name of the township. But in ancient days, it was called Apaliacom. It was literally a temple to the god Apollo because they believe that's the gateway to the underworld. So in Revelation chapter number 9, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now, let's make sense of it for you right now. This is 2015. The church is dead and asleep. The only, the only way you, the, the only crowds you have in this country today are the crowds that are pumped up by rock and rap, and it's all about love, self-love, and positive attitudes, and you know, money and me, myself and I. I'm in love with me, I'm, a, I'm in love with myself, and I'm in love with I. You've got the people to the point to where they can be moved emotionally, not intellectually, but emotionally. Anything stirs people today. They got crowd mentality. They got mob mentality. Can you imagine something that has created earthquakes, that has made apparitions appear, that you've got scientists warning, don't do this. You don't know what you're going to unleash. Maybe there's a greater purpose in all of that that they're not even aware of. He's called Satan. Maybe he intends to bring chaos on this earth. Chaos order out of chaos, the peacemaker shows up, the earth is in a turmoil and it's blazing and burning, and then the peacemaker shows up. How close could we be to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? How close could we be? How close? The church is asleep, but the Lord's coming back. And to hear about something over here that they can produce one gram of it has the potential of four atomic bombs. Boy, if somebody got a hold of that, you talk about blackmailing a whole nation. And did you know what? They say they're weaponizing it now. And they say now that the nations of the world, although they've joined together over there in Europe with this collider, they've stepped back and thought to themselves, hold on. If this crowd over here gets that, we need that. And there you go. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to tell you this morning what I really believe. I really do believe this. I believe that all the peace and prosperity and, and, and joy, as far as this world's concerned, that you've enjoyed, enjoy it. Because I don't think things are going to get any better. I believe they're going to get worse. And I believe you're just beginning to see the, the beginning of it. And I believe that uh, a war is soon to come. There's going to come an Armageddon. There's coming an ap apocalypse. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. I hope you are. I hope you're ready to meet the Lord. I hope you're ready. My biggest fear of this place over here is not them blowing up the world. Although, I, you know, the Lord's going to make the decision about that. Here's what I worry about coming out of that place is all this spirit deception using it to deceive people. They connect spirituality and science together. Imagine.
what kind of a union that would have. Science and spirituality, not Christ, but science and spirituality joined together. Man, they've got what they want when that happens. How many of you know the Lord Jesus this morning? Boy, even so, come Lord Jesus. Now folks, I've only had three or four days to deal with this. I've gotten some stuff in here that I need to go deeper into and look at a little further because there's some stuff going on here that literally blows my mind. But what I've given out to you this morning is just skimming the surface about what's happening in CERN, Switzerland. Some of you may know a whole lot more about some of this stuff than I do. But if you do, you should be alarmed because of what I've told you the truth. Folks, this is not hypothetical. If I understand correctly, no more than a handful of matter was used to blow up Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They released the potential in that and blew it up, if I understand it correctly. And that one gram of antimatter is four times more powerful than what blew up Nagasaki and Hiroshima. You don't want that in the hands of the wrong person. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to use what I've said, Lord, for the glory of God. There may be somebody sitting in this house this morning that's awake now. They've wakened up. They're alarmed, and they're worried, and they're thinking, my goodness, if half of what that preacher said is true, that's enough to stir me. I'm going to do something about it in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. So the intention is marvelous. Um, only uh, uh, this physics, which no one knows yet in, in this realm, uh, also contains dangers. And I'm a little concerned about the dangers that are not yet, how should I say, uh, addressed so far. We have the power to overcome our own flesh because the darkness in this world is about to be pulled out of everything. Everything with darkness in it, that darkness is about to surface in a way that no one ever forecasted or thought possible, but it's absolutely going to take place. Are you watching this, guys? Are they watching this? This is one of our darkest days as a city. And the only way a person can overcome this is through the true power of the Holy Spirit. And to stay within the blood of the Lamb, there is no hypocrisy in purity. There is no hatred in purity. There is no accusation in purity. And people need to be in that purity in truth, not acting like they're in the purity. They have to be there. It has to be in their hearts. And they have to do everything they can do right now so they can be strong enough to endure. None of us knows when we're absolutely going, but I, I, for one, intend to finish this race, and I'm trying to sound an alarm that something very different is going to be uh, all too evident to everybody who believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And without Him in truth, they're not going to make it. They will not make it without Him in truth. One of the tragedies of Nepal's earthquake is that many of the country's most treasured cultural monuments were destroyed in the blink of an eye. I'm standing in what was the Fashi Dega temple. It was dedicated to Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, and now there's very little of it left. 